ಭಕ್ತಿ ಮಂಗಳ ಕಾಲಿ ಭದ್ರಕಾಳಿ ಕಪಾಲಿನಿ ದುರ್ಗಾ ಕ್ಷಮ ಶಿವಾಧಾತ್ರಿ ಸ್ವಾಹ ಸ್ವಧ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಜಯ ತ್ವಂ ದೇವಿ ಚಾಮುಂಡಿ ಜಯ ಭೂತಾಪಹಾರಿಣಿ ಜಯ ಸರ್ವಗತಿ ದೇವಿ ಕಾಲರಾತ್ರಿ ನಮೋಸ್ತು ಮಧು ಕೈಟಭ ವಿಧ್ವಂಸಿ ವಿಧಾತ್ರ ವರದೇ ನಮ ರೂಪಂ ದೇಹಿ ಜಯಂ ದೇಹಿ ಜಶೋ ದೇಹಿ ದಿಸೌ ಜಹಿ This poem of mine is dedicated to the yoginis. The title of the poem is Soul Bird. Deep in your chest glows the golden shine of the razor sharp sun rays. Deep in your heart reverberates sagas of battles fought, tales of valor. This temple is devoid of memories. This temple is devoid of memories except you the air i breathe you the sky of the underworlds let me dwell as the bird of your soul let me dwell as the bird of your soul flitting from flower to flower on the way out of this world Well I am in exalted company today because as you can see I have this morning as my companions the very very famed and powered dynamic yogis I don't think I can have better luck Welcome all of you to this uh, beautiful Chaushati Yogini Temple at uh, Hirapur, Odisha. We do have another Yogini Temple at Ranipur Jharial as well and in other parts of India. But right now today we are standing before Mahamaya, the main deity of this temple. And locally this temple is also popular as the Mahamaya Mandir. And there are several Hindu uh, religious rites and rituals that are associated with this. However, the world over when we talk about Joshati Yogini Temple which has been an obscure uh, cult the yogini cult has been relatively anonymous and obscure till recent times when a niche segment of uh, people academicians tourists uh, general readers evinced an interest about what is tantra what is the yogini cult and then suddenly you know a lot of research happened and we happened to visit these shrines and uh, whenever we are talking about uh, the yogini cult tantra is a synonymous thing they go together they are almost inextricably intertwined with the rites and rituals the signs and symbols the magic of rural and tribal traditions so when we talk about tantra or yogini cult it is something which essentially has its origin in the rural tradition Now when I talk about uh, tantra definitely I would like to just uh, tell a little bit about uh, the various viewpoints that have existed across time and across the world regarding tantra one of course is the very widely accepted theory that tantra is the path to liberation so there are a lot of tantric uh, people uh, visitors and devotees who come here because they believe that this temple leads them to be a liberated soul however at the other time We also have other controversial views and theories like uh, tantra being a tool of sorcery and occult practices and of course the very controversial viewpoint uh, both here as well as in the west that it is a, a path to libertine sexuality where we break the normal accepted uh, code of conduct of society uh, however uh, we are not going to discuss about which of these theories is uh, you know acceptable i just wanted to give you a viewpoint about what is tantra now here if when I, when i talk to you about the chaushati yogini temple as you can see i'm surrounded on all sides by the 63 yoginis because there is one yogini that is missing in this temple 
And uh, there are several theories regarding the origin of uh, the yoginis. Uh, there is mention of the yoginis in the Vedas. However, you will seldom find all 64 of them mentioned at one place. There are mentions of different yoginis at different places in Vedas. Uh, like the slain of Raktavirya, some yoginis were formed by the contribution of gods to uh, drink the blood. Because let me tell you, yoginis are always associated with the cemetery. And there are a lot of, you know, uh, concocted uh, stories and myths that made the yoginis uh, appear very ferocious uh, and scary. Uh, but uh, here you can see these 64 yoginis uh, in the 64 yogini temple. This is one of the most uh, uh, you know, intact temples in the sense that most of the statues are still in pretty good shape and you can see that many of them are in Odissi dance poses with beautifully, uh, you know, uh, designed coiffure. The hairstyle is unique for each one of them. They have, uh, they are adorned with beautiful jewellery and the most important part is that they all have their vahanas or their mounts and they are also in one sense ferocious and present here in the female form of many male counterparts, excepting of course the Bhairava. So you can see here, there is one very interesting theory that has been adapted from Chandi Purana, which says that uh, the 64 yoginis are 64 manifestations of the different uh, natures of a woman. So she is intelligent, she is brave, she is courageous, she is cunning, she is a strategist, she is evil. So all the things that a human embodies, you find them in these women here. What makes the 64 yoginis very relevant today is that they are all symbols of empowered women. If you look at all these and we will you know, take you across the journey, you'll see that each one of them represents a power. They are holding certain you know, weapons or you know, so some kind of you know, symbol is attached to them which shows that they are on their own and I think that is the biggest message that we can be giving to women uh, at the present time. This is Mahamaya, the most important yogini of the shrine and uh, as uh, there is reference that the Chaushati Yogini Temple of Hirapur is also popularly referred to as the Mahamaya Temple. A ten-armed figure, slightly bigger than the rest of the Yoginis here, Mahamaya is mounted on a full-blown lotus. She is covered right now, so uh, you cannot probably see it. A squarish Shaktipita is placed right below her feet on the ground. She is adorned with a mukuta and kirita with a beautiful necklace bejeweled girdle, anklets and armlets. The locals uh, do puja here, they offer their worship here and there is an ancient tank at the southern side of the temple which is also named after Mahamaya called the Mahamaya Pushkarini. This morning you can see hibiscus, the bright red of the hibiscus specially offered to her which makes her look very radiant and beautiful as she is. Uh, but especially as I was telling you that this temple has uh, women who are the female manifestations of very famous male god gods. So I think, you know, I don't even need to tell you that this is uh, Vinayaki, uh, who is also known as Ganeshani. And uh, uh, this is, of course, you know, let me introduce you. This is a book that I have written on the Chaushati Yoginis as a result of several years of research. Uh, the Ch Chaushati Yoginis of Hirapur from Tantra to Tourism, published by Black Eagle Books uh, USA. And uh, I will just uh, give you small pointers of the gods and goddesses here. As you can see, Vinayaki here is uh, two-armed. And uh, the unique feature of Vinayaki is that she has an elephant face. And uh, the stomach is, of course, the you know, telltale pot belly, which identifies her so much. As I have already told you, that the, these gods, goddesses are famous for the mounds. So you can see that the mount here is an ass and uh, she is wearing her hair in the Jata Juta or Jata Mukuta style. You know, 
the knotted hair style. So can you imagine 8th century, 9th century this temple is credited to? At that time having these evolved uh, dress senses is like you know something very very astounding. I, I was just telling you that she uh, has on uh, her immediate both you know flanked on both sides where you have Rudrakali on one side and again I can tell you that Rudrakali's mount is a cow and her hair is spread all around her face like a flame as you can see here and then uh, let me let me tell you that uh, she is holding a sword of course certain portions are you know not here so you will just have to uh, uh, you know imagine it and most of these dresses you know have intricate designs as you can see it's made on the body and you can see the intricate designs there and as I have already said, you know, she is in a Samabhanga pose, certain other goddesses are in a Dvibhanga pose. So that part is also there and then you have Vindhya Balini here. Now what is noticeable about all these faces is the extremely serene expressions. So I would like to mention one thing here. Nowhere in the Yogini temples, whether it is Ranipur Jharyal or Morena or Bhedagat or uh, Hirapur, are the Chaushati Yoginis in erotic poses. It is of course a manifestation of the craftsmen who have created them. But the fact that a woman appears, a goddess appears as a woman does not make her erotic. So this is something you know which is very very interesting because a lot of people come here thinking it is a tantra pit and the goddesses must be erotic. It has nothing to do with eroticism. The second myth that I would like to clarify is there was never any animal or human sacrifice made in the tantra puja. They believed in Shava Chedan. Shava Chedan is with due permission when people died or expired, they would find out, get the dead bodies and conduct the Tantra rites on them. So this again was something which scared local people that you know they killed humans here but there was nothing of that kind that has been recorded. A qualifying feature of all the yoginis in this temple are they are very anthropomorphic in the sense that they have human bodies and uh, animal faces. But in the case of Saraswati, you can see that her vahana or the mount is a snake. She is holding a veena, of course, but then she has, uh, you know, on one side she is a woman and on the other side she is a man. It's a very unique statue because it uh, exemplifies the concept of Ardhanarishwara. And what is interesting is on one side, the face is very gentle, you know, exactly, you know, how you would imagine a soft, gentle, feminine face. On the other side, she has a moustache and with one arm, she's holding the veena and twirling the moustache as well. So what does this symbolize? That there is a man and a woman living in the same body. So here, what we are basically meaning is the traits. What society has labeled as masculine and feminine, they actually merge together in one human being. And what a wonderful depiction in Saraswati we have here, the Yogini Saraswati. Well, uh, this is uh, the Narmada Yogini and she is one of my most favorites uh, in the temple. Of course, actually, you know, I can't be biased because I think they're all very beautiful and they all are individual, uh, you know, goddesses in their own right. But as you can see, as I have just been telling you, and I'll refer to my book for this, you have a two-armed, very, very benevolent, docile face with a wonderful, uh, you know, headdress as usual. But see, she wears this garland, which is actually a garland of skulls, or what is called a mundamala, along with the different other ornaments. So with the different ornaments, the mundamala again is a kind of, you know, we won't call it a clash, but we will say that it is a merging together of very aggressive and very, very soft traits in a woman. The other feature is the skull cap that she is holding. It is believed that she is drinking blood from the skull cap. Now when we typically think of Narmada, Narmada personifies, you know, a very calm and gentle uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, appearance. But you can see in that gentle appearance also there is fire. So uh, maybe this is what is depicted here. And the hair is braided uh, right up to the head. So you can see that a woman should not be interpreted accordingly, you know, as current times, you know, there are a lot of tourists who are coming here because they feel this is a seat of empowerment. You can see that a woman can, of course, be very gentle. She can be motherly, 
but at the same time she knows how to stand up for herself and she is definitely not going to be soft when uh, something wrong happens i think that is how we can interpret it in the current times this year is chamunda yogini and uh, i have to share with you one of my observations in my several visits to the yogini temple that uh, the devotees first come and worship uh, mahamaya and then they worship chamunda she is the ferocious one she is the one who gets angry at the uh, you know very very easily she gets angry so she needs to be kept happy but actually in a sense i feel they are all forms uh, of the same goddess because they are believed to be parts of the mother goddess however to you know acclimatize you with uh, chamunda you can see she the most important thing is she is not voluptuous and like the other goddesses here who are typically they appear very voluptuous so they are mistaken to be erotic uh, she has a skeletal figure and uh, she is wearing a garland of skulls again uh, and uh, over her head she is holding a lion hide in the lower two hands she holds a katari and a severed human head as you can see so the name chamunda is justified the musk deer is the mount of this ferocious yogini and what is interesting is she stands in the tribhanga pose so i've told you we have seen tribhanga samabhanga and tribhanga poses in the goddesses here Chaushati Yogini Temple, of course, is unique for several aspects. But one of the most important aspects is that it is one of the few hypothetical temples of the world. This word "hypothetical" in Latin means "hypothesis," means open air. And uh, initially, it was described by the Roman architect Vitruvius in his treatise on architecture. A study of history reveals that the innermost sanctuary of some ancient temples. in the israelite tradition known as the holy of the holies was sometimes open to the sky hypothetical or under heaven and uh, this design the temple's design matches the cosmos because it is open on all sides examples are also found uh, outside in stonehenge and gobekli tepe temples the world over often have been closely tied with the cosmos adorned with cosmological symbols so among the different yogini temples that you find Most of these temples are circular temples open to the skies.